Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, wherever you may be. <laughs> Just wait a few seconds for people to pop in. Today, I am lucky enough to be joined with the Christical Cronk. Hello to everyone. <laughs> I'm in the corner, sitting she's, in the corner. She's in the back corner, <laughs> social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she is here to help, as always, um, with questions in the comments section. Today, for those of you that are just popping in, we are going to do some salon style nail art with a selection of our um, cat's eye polishes. So these here, these 10 right here that I have in my hands, these are our 4D gel, or um, sorry, our 4D cat's eye gel polishes. They come in some really beautiful um, color shifting shades. So most of them, I think all of them, except for the silver, um, will shift between two different colors, which is a really, really pretty effect. And then we have, I just have a, a select couple colors here of our traditional cat's eye. Um, these look beautiful as a full color. Um, or you can, of course, use our trusty double-sided cat's eye magnet to create that, um, um, it's like a, a signature, yeah. a signature like cat's eye <laughs> line design. Um, of course, you can do that with our 4D ones also, but you can do some really, really neat things and create neat effects with these 4D guys. So today, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we are going to create some of these, one of these. And I think the Christical requested to do this kind of crocodile snake skin kind of one on the very right here with the pink and the purple and all that reflective goodness. So all of these were created using our 4D gel polish or 4D cat's eye gel polish um, and our clear sculpting gel, our matte top coat and our no wipe top coat. These tips here are our number two oval art tips, and these tips here are our beautiful um, pointed almond tippies. So Hannah's just asked if that's the new 40 cat's eye, and it is, it is. 10 colors. And the four that were just shown above are our regular um, cat's eye yes. as well. All right, so just to save a bit of time, what I've done ahead is I've gone in with um, our black gel polish, which is number 043, and I've done two thin coats of that just to create a nice um, solid background for the design we're going to paint. So first of all, we are actually going to create the outline for all of our um, scales or our sections here just to make it easier when we're going in and doing one of the last steps. So we will get there. But let's start first. So I've got my trusty palette here with our gorgeous pink art gel. This pink is beautiful. Mm, I was just saying to Natasha, she's <laughs> putting it on her palette. It is gorgeous. Yeah, that's a great color. I actually, I'm not even a super pink person on my own nails, but whenever the nice weather comes, instantly I'm yeah. like, oh, I want pink. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got my pink art gel. We've got our tippy here with two coats of black gel polish. And just let us know, thank you, Crystal. Mm -hmm, Crystal's yeah. gonna turn on one more light here. Let, let us know if I'm out of frame or um, if you guys can't see or hear anything and we will we'll try and fix it right away. Is it new collection? Um, no, this is not a new 4D Cat's Eye collection. It's our existing one, but we just wanted to feature it because it's such a fun collection and I don't. I personally don't think it's had enough Enough love. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I guess when I had mentioned new, I meant it was our latest. Yes. 10 models. Yeah. But yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the, um, the largest spots here. So we're going to start in the middle of those larger spots. And we're going to create those first and then work outward on either side. So you can see here I've done this one straight down the middle or I've done it on an angle. What do you think we should do? I like the angle. Angle? I think that's cool. Okay, let's, let's do see. that. Okay, let's see what everybody else yeah, says. Angle or down the middle? We'll wait just a moment. Yeah. They're so beautiful, Natasha. Oh my god. Just gosh. the way they shift and like if you aren't feeling too crazy and don't necessarily want to wear um, a crocodile pattern or snakeskin pattern on your nails, you can create some beautiful looking shell inspired nails oh, for yeah. mermaid nails or just a little touch of summer. Okay, so far, so far, I think Angle is winning. Um, Priscilla just said hi. Natasha. Hi, Priscilla. 
Yeah, let's do the angle. Okay, I think that's let's the do it. Perfect. So I am going to go, I'm going to go from the left side at the top and then work my way down to the bottom right. So I'm just loading my brush with some of our pink art gel. And the beautiful thing about this is the lines don't have to be super smooth um, or perfect, which I think I feel like is a trend with the nail art that I do. And I feel like I say that every time. Um, but for something like this, I actually like irregularity in the lines. So I'm going to start in the middle ish of the nail on an angle and we're going to kind of create softened rectangular or squished um, round circle shapes. So I'm going to start at the top. It's a little blurry. Is gosh. it? I'm not sure. Just I so might be know. zoomed in too much. Is that better? No? It's just a bit of a delay, so let's have a few keys. It might be better. Yeah, there. That looks better. Okay, gosh, perfect. Better. I think we were zoomed in too much before. Hi, Priscilla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I started with the top line, and then I'm just going to start wrapping that around. Load my brush a little bit more. So we're just creating the initial um, center spot here. And this is what we're gonna build off of. A tip too, if you, some of you may find, um, depending on what you're used to working with, if the art gel is too thick for you to paint with, to paint lines, you can also add a little bit of our gel polish in a matching shade or a similar shade to thin it out for you a little bit. I don't mind it thicker, um, but it's personal preference. Okay, so we've got our first um, scale, I guess you could say here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to build off of this one. So using this as the bottom of my top one, we're just going to continue on creating the same kind of shapes. And they don't have to be the same width or um, thickness. Just pulling that along, just following the same angle going up and going down. No, Natasha, you like working with the detailer too. Yes. Brush. This is my, yeah, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no. This is my favorite, favorite brush. And I'm sure those of you that have taken classes with us or have watched videos, I always say the detailer too is my must have brush. And I just find, I mean, all of our brushes are wonderful to work with. And I'm not just saying that I'm not biased, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they really are. And the, a detail or two if you've never tried any of our brushes our art brushes or anything and you, you want to start with one my personal preference is the detail or two it, I find it's just so versatile it's kind of in between our smallest detailer brush and then our striper so you kind of can use it for multiple things Erin just said, um, she commented, Erin, she won the prize pack from our Hatchiversary, oh. and it was in her prize pack, and she loves it. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got our first center row here of our scales. This one was quite large, and hey, that's okay, because just like in nature, not everything is always totally symmetrical. So we are going to roll with it. So now we're going to start creating these outer scales along here and along here. So what I'm going to do, and you guys can always reference um, pictures on Google too of different scale patterns and that sort of thing. I find Google is your best friend when you're doing something like this also or painting flowers or anything really. Just having reference photos kind of helps. Um, but what I'm choosing to do is the next scale is going to be on either side of this center mark. So we're going to start over here. And I was just going to say, it's amazing because you can see how pigmented the art gel is over the black. Yeah. So that's a good uh, test how pigmented it really our is. art gels are. Yeah. Super pigmented. And even if you didn't want to go ahead and do the cat's eye step, this would look really cool with the black or the black base with the pink scales. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to start the same thing over here. I'm kind of just creating almost like a rough tear shape, I guess. Okay, and there's, you can, can you see that little dot there? So that's going to be another little scale also. So this is a scale, this is a scale, this is a scale. We're going to continue that all the way down and I'm um, working outward on either side of the nail. Just working our way down. And I'm kind of, I'm not really making them completely smooth. I'm kind of wiggling my brush ever so lightly so that they're not a completely smooth 
circle or half circle on top. Okay, and pull that out. And also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I haven't cured anything and I'm still working and nothing is really moving. Nothing's moving, even this small little part here, nothing is flooding together, which is really handy and something that I personally look for when I'm working with an art gel. Okay, but that's not to say that I don't trust myself and I may actually cure this in a second <laughs> after I do this side. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead here and just repeat the same steps on the other side. Pull those together. Some may be smaller, some may be larger. But once we put that cat eye on and you start to see that shift, this looks so cool. And you can actually get different effects um, by using different base colors and I'll show you guys once I put this in for a little bit of a cure because I am clumsy and I have been known to mess up my demos. So we're just going to cure this after I've done this final row here or this final one I mean. All I'm gonna say is when you go to put it in the lamp, like, <laughs> <laughs> it just brings us back oh, to no. the first class we did. <laughs> so bad. And I'm, those of you that have watched before, we've told this story, but the first time I, Christina and I ever did a class together, I'm just gonna pop this in the lamp for a cure, just to hold it in place for about um, probably 30 seconds because the gel, color gel is quite thin, um, but I just wanna hold it in place. Um, the first demo I ever did in a nail class, <laughs> I was nervous and I went to, it was a, a, a sweater, nail. Yeah, sweater nail, yeah, a sugared sweater nail and I went to put it in the lamp and as I'm going to put it in the lamp, first of all, it took me probably like three hours <laughs> to do, not literally, yeah. but it took me so long to do the demo and then I'm finally going to put it in the lamp and I was like relieved so I was talking and not paying attention and I went to put it in the lamp and I hit the top of the lamp at the opening and scraped the whole thing off before I could even <laughs> cure it. It was everyone went silent. Honestly, <laughs> it was so bad. But without things like that, you don't have big, you know, stories to tell and things totally. to have. I did laugh at. Totally. Yeah. So, sorry, I should clarify. I just saw a, a um, yeah. question. I did not top coat. I'm working directly over top of the inhibition layer from the cured um, black gel polish. So I did two coats of number 43 gel polish. I left um, it just with the inhibition layer, and I'm working over top of that with the um, pink art gel. Okay, so we've got some space here and some space here, so let's fill that up and we're just going to continue these same shapes on the sides. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just want it to be nice and full. So, on either side of where the two below meet. Okay. This would also be really neat too if you um, had some pigments and you used our white art gel, cured the white art gel in this pattern and then patted some of the pigments over top to, that would be neat too. But my favorite look is with our cat's eye, just because it shifts. Christina and I were, or Christical, mm. ooh. ooh, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Christical and I were looking at them this morning and we were like, oh, they're just so pretty the way they shift. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And with this design in the shell or um, this, um, like the pattern sleep, yeah. Yeah, that you're doing now is absolutely gorgeous and how it reflects. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm excited to see it. Okay, we are getting there, folks. Warm today, hey? Not as warm as yesterday. It was like 30 degrees here in Victoria yesterday, I think, or the I day know. before. I can't remember. It's been hot a couple days in a row. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but I could sit and watch someone hand paint all day. I find it really relaxing. It definitely is. And for me, because I'm not a hand painter, it would stress me out to hand paint, but watching others like Natasha do it, really nice. Looks um, good. Thank you very much. So we're gonna pop that in the lamp for a cure. And I'm the same way with watching people like sculpt, like watching you sculpt and stuff. I find it really relaxing. Sculpting. Yeah. 
done filing. Your filing is so satisfying. Agreed. Yep. Okay, so I'm just putting the lid back on my brush because I don't want to cure anything. And next, we are going to grab one of our 40 colors here. So let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see them all. What one do you think we should do? This one is one of my favorites because it reflects like gold and purple. I don't know if you can really see it in the camera or not. Let me just see. I think this is the one that oh, I actually use. I think I'm, I'm agreeing with you really on that one. This one's so pretty. I mean, they're all pretty, but this one I think would look really great with the hot pink. Mm -hmm. Let's let's do, unless somebody else disagrees, let's do that one, I think. I agree. Yeah? Okay, let's do that one. This one is number 183. Let me just move these to the side just for a second. This is number 183, and it's so pretty. That duochrome. Do I top coat the art gel? No, I don't top coat either. I'm still just working right over that inhibition layer from the cured black gel polish because we are going to go in now and we're going to add our, whoops, just gonna zoom in here. It's not letting me, there we go. We are going to add a coat of our 183 gel polish. This is the 40 cat's eye. We're just gonna go ahead and just brush this on. We're brushing it over everything we've just done. And the neat thing about this is because the base of the um, 40 cat's eye is clear, you're actually gonna be able to see your guidelines through. So then we're gonna go back and we are going to build up in each section to create that raised scale effect. So I'm just making sure I don't have too much product on there, but making sure that all the little cracks and crevices are all filled in. And then we're gonna take our double-sided cat's eye magnet. And this is where the fun starts. This is where you get to start manipulating the pigment and moving it around. This is how you can kind of create that velvet look by pulling the, the um, particles in there around and just make, moving it until you're happy with the overall look. I kind of always like to almost pull the product downward. And it kind of creates even more dimension as you rotate the nail. And the beautiful thing is if you're not happy with how it's looking, you can just come back with your brush. I wipe as much product off as I can because I've already got enough on there. And you can actually just wipe over the whole thing and kind of almost reset it. The thing is, if you're doing this on a client though, you're gonna wanna work finger by finger because if you get the particles kind of where you want them, you're gonna to want to get it in the lamp right away because the gel polish will settle and you'll start to lose that effect. Just gonna pull that around here. Yeah, that looks so cool. Okay, let's pop that in the lamp. Ooh, hear that? All right, that was in your prize bag. Can you love it? Oh, good. Oh, I think I'm like, wait, oh, there we go. Love 183, I know 183 is a great color. Okay, just a few more seconds. Alrighty, next, now we are gonna add top coat. We are gonna add our award-winning matte top coat. I can get it open, there we go. Is it blurry? Uh, oh, I think it might be trying to, there we go, uh, focus on the, there we go. I moved that out of the way maybe. Okay, it might be hard to focus because it is pretty like shimmery, so I think once we're matte, it might be a little bit better. So I'm just applying matte top coat over the entire nail. And we're gonna give this a 45 second cure in our LED lamp. Nice even coat. And our matte, for those of you who may not have used it, is extremely matte. And for those of you that do use our matte, if you ever notice that by chance it's not as matte as it normally is, 
it's a super simple fix and usually what it is is just that some of the matte particles and the matte pigment in there has settled to the bottom so you just want to do up your bottle and give it a really good roll upside down and all those particles will come down and get mixed back in and it'll be back to its matte goodness perfect we're doing okay over there you guys Yes, so this um, video will be saved on our feed and we will also upload it to YouTube. So if your client gets here and you're cut off short, you can look back and watch Natasha finish her design. Yeah, anytime yeah. we do a live video, we always save them on, ooh, geez, on the Ugly Duckling Facebook page and then we um, also eventually upload them on YouTube. Okay. I think we're almost there, just a couple more seconds. A couple of these. In here, they're so pretty. No. <laughs> I know sometimes it's hard where nail tech can get distracted. distracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've done our matte top coat. We're just going to swipe down. And this looks cool even matte. You can still see it shifting, but we're gonna make it even more fabulous. So I'm going to take my sculpting gel here, my sculpting gel on the bottle, our clear, and I'm going to bring this, this over and I'm going to use the nozzle and place some on my palette because we are going to use clear sculpting gel to build up these scales. I'm just going to put a little bit for now because I don't want to waste any product, which I've been known to do. And just so everybody knows, our clear, or sorry, all of our 60 mil sculpting gel this month, for the month of June, is 15% off for each color in 60 mil squeeze bottles. And it also comes with one of our really beautiful free stands, or sorry, one of our stands for free. <laughs> They're not usually free, but they are this month, which is really awesome. It's very handy with these sculpting gel in a bottle, just to make sure that all the product gets pulled down to the nozzle. And it's super handy, and they look really nice on your desk too. I have mine all displayed at home on my nail desk. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna pick up some of my sculpting gel with my, I'm gonna use my striper. We're gonna pick up some sculpting gel and we are going to start building up our sections. Now you may have to tilt the nail because of the cat's eye polish. Some angles you'll be able to see a little bit better, um, just the way that the product is reflecting. So we're gonna go ahead Start building up. I'm starting right in the section that I actually started um, hand painting with the pink. Just picking up this product. And depending on where you are and how warm it is, you may be able to get away with doing a couple sections. If you're going to do a couple sections at once, I would suggest maybe not doing them right next to each other just to avoid any risk of the um, scale spots kind of running together. So I'll do that center one and then I'm going to do one over here and I'm staying within the pink lines or trying to at least. I'm not going over them because I do want some space in between each scale. I don't want each scale touching um, and that way you can kind of see some of the matte peeking through underneath. Okay, we're going to pull that around. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flash cure this and I'm able to flash cure this because it's clear sculpting gel, and we are also gonna be doing a full cure at the end anyway, so we're gonna make sure that the product is fully cured and, and there's no risk of uncured product being on your client's nails. So the great thing, um, I saw somebody mention the shell one. The shell one is the exact same, um, um, Oh my gosh, I can't even think of the, my words today. Application. <laughs> Thank you. Like the same kind of thing, it's just the design is yeah. different. So instead of doing um, hand painting out the scales for the shell one, honestly, I just laid out the shapes in my gel polish first, cured that, and then I took a bead of gel and just dragged it to a really, really elongated um, teardrop and flash cured, and then continued on side to side and created the same kind of effect as the scales, but in the shape of a shell. So we have a question about um, how much would you charge for this design? Pricing is always so tricky. 
So I think too, it would depend on how long it's taking yes. you to apply. So when it, I find when you're learning a new um, a technique or doing something for the first time, really figuring figuring out how long yeah. it takes you to actually perform the service. A full set definitely would cost quite a bit because it's going to yes. take you some time. Um, but usually, you know, I would say if you're doing a full nail like this, probably at least $15 for the design. I would. Would you think? I would because you also have to think of your product cost too. Yes. So you're using gel polish as the base. You're using your art gel. You're using more um, 40 cat side gel polish. And then you're using clear sculpting gel and you're using top coat. And it's your time as well. You have to get paid for your time. And as artists, we are always so wanting to just like undercutting and like not yeah and like giving stuff away for free and like i mean i, I yeah I, as much i'm as guilty want, yeah, as i much know as we want to do it you know for next to nothing we can't and i think just this is something in the industry as a whole that we need to try and be a little bit better at um just because it's so hard it, and it makes it almost impossible for artists that are new um, to try and compete with somebody who may have been doing nails for 15 or 20 years and is doing like hand-painted Picasso nails and only charging $40 for a full set. It just makes it really tricky. And it also undervalues you and your talents and your strengths. So yeah, I think for something like this, you also have to really... Um, um, taking into consideration how long it's going to take you to do also because you have to think okay say in half an hour that could be depending on how fast you are that could be half of another client so you have to think of that as well okay so we're just going to keep repeating this same step and I know this part's a little bit repetitive sorry but I promise the end result is worth it so can you guys see those colors shifting this is so fun Okay, just filling in these spots. We're working right down the center. And for a design like this too, I would not be afraid to ask my client to move their hand around for me. So if I need to flip them this way, flip them that way, you need to do whatever you're gonna be able, to, whatever you have to do to be able to get this design done. Okay, we're filling in and alternatively if you were doing this on like a natural nail client um, who had just had gel polish over their natural nails you could use our clear builder base um, to fill in the scales if you didn't want to use or if you if they're not doing it over an enhancement just doing it on natural nails that's an option too does no white would be too self-leveling do you find or could they build no white? it up no, yeah. you can, you could use no white, but it wouldn't be as raised as by doing it with um, a, like a more of a builder gel. And I guess it also depends on what your client's preference is too, if they don't want it too textured, because I know that my cousin, she'll pick if there's something too raised on her nails. <laughs> so. <laughs> Even nail techs were all fingers. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I've been called out a couple times around here. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just being mindful as I'm getting close to other scales that I'm not flooding the area with product. If you get some on there, worse comes to worse, you could always um, wipe it off. I had to, well, actually, while I was doing some of the demo nails, I had to just wipe off a little section because I got a little too generous with the gel. Uh, Natasha, yeah. what? Um, what base color did you use on the gold shell? Sue Jones um, is asking. Oh, hi, Sue. Um, so on the gold shell, I used number 148. 148 is the base, and then over top, I used number 184, um, Cat's Eye, which this is a shade I always reach for. It's so, so pretty. It's like a kind of pewter gold, and it kind of reflects a little bit of pink in there. Just a gorgeous shade, and it looks beautiful over... Um, lighter colors and then on this one the purple one I actually use number 133 as a base and then I use number 181 cat's eye over that one and it totally gives it um, a lighter look because it looks pretty dark in the bottle but because the base is clear and you're putting it over a lighter shade underneath it just lightens the color overall 
Okay, I hope you guys are doing okay. We're almost there. A few more little spots to go. Can you guys believe it's already June? It's crazy. Yes, yeah, so Natasha is just using our clear building gel. Yes. To create the scales. The clear sculpting gel. Just rotate but she head. also did mention to Chloe that if you were doing this on a natural nail gel polish application, you can always use um, our builder base to yes. create the scales as well. Absolutely. I'm just rotating my nail because there, it's quite heavy here just with um, some of the pigment from the um, the uh, cat's eye gel polish. So I just have to rotate the nail to be able to see my little guidelines underneath. Natasha, as you're working, I just have a yeah, question for you from absolutely. Karen. Okay. She just wants to make sure uh, she understands how the shell is done. Okay. Did you draw each section out with the number 133 and then um, the 40 on top as an overall layer? So I did, first step is two coats of black gel polish, number 43. Then over top of the cured gel polish, no top coat or anything like that. On the shell. Oh, on the shell. My I'm, sorry. Just, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. So on the shells, what I did was, yes, I used 133 for this blue shell. And basically, I can show you on the palette here while that my nail is curing. Um, I took uh, the dotting end tool of my blinger, or the dotting, you know what I mean. <laughs> that tool. <laughs> this tool. And so, okay, so I took my first bead, and I... Put it at the highest point that I wanted the shell, or at the, the point that I wanted highest on the shell. And then I took some more and did one on either side. So you're kind of creating almost like a scalloped effect. And then let's just say that this is the nail, this is the cuticle area of the nail. I promise I can shape better than that in real life. Okay, this is the cuticle area and this will be the free edge. So then over to the side wall, I do one more and then one more over here. And then I would come in with my brush, just lightly pull down. So, cause we don't want those areas too heavy with um, product. We wanna make sure everything cures properly. Pull down and then wrap it around the free edge. I would cure this and then I would do the same steps over again with the same color. Then I come in and I do the same thing with one coat of the um, cat's eye gel polish. So number 181 is what I used. Do my magnet, cure it, and then I do the effect with the clear gel. So I would start, I don't know if you guys are, can you see the clear okay? Mm -hmm. So basically I would take a bead of the clear gel up at the dot, the first dot, put it down. And then I come in with my brush, my striper brush. And I start making an elongated tear shape, teardrop shape. Just pull that down to a point and I repeat the same steps on either side. So picking up a bead, placing that down, and I leave a little bit of space in between each elongated teardrop. Just so you can see the, um, the mat underneath because you would seal with matte before doing this step of course just like with the scales you want to do this over a matte surface so that the gel doesn't self level more over the inhibition layer of the geared gel polish i hope that makes sense erin says she's going to try to talk her client into doing it tonight yay if you do, make sure to share it to our support page we yeah want we want to see cool okay so we're in the home stretch guys we're just filling in these last few scales. I'm leaving some tiny spaces um, to fill in until I get these bigger spaces filled because I just don't want everything to melt together. You want to leave space in between because that's going to give you the definition between the scales. Now let's go one more and feeling brave. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Maybe a little too brave because it is warm in here. So, you know what? We're going to stick that in real quick, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. 
Real meal type problem. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just pushing the limits. Yeah. That's okay. Oh, good, Chloe. I'm glad that makes sense because sometimes I think it does in my head and then I know sometimes it doesn't translate that way. No, <laughs> okay, we've got that flash cured. And we've got a few little ones up here. And then what we're going to do after this is we're going to go back and we're just going to cover the spots with a bit of no wipe to keep them nice and shiny and keep the underlying product matte. And then we're done. So we've got a little space there. I'm just going to pick up just ever so little amount of product on my brush. Just put a little bead there. See, over here is a little bit tight, so I don't want to push it, but we've got a little space on the edge here, so we'll put a little bit there. And of course, I'm working on a tip, so it's going to be easier around the sides, but when working on a client, you want to avoid getting any product on their skin. So if you can't get right down to the sidewalls, that's okay. Just leave that, leave that alone. <laughs> don't touch it. <laughs> Okay, pop that in there. I'm happy with that. I'm just going to put my cap back on my brush here. And then we're going to grab our mat, or no, our no wipe. Oh my goodness. And I'm going to place some of that on my palette here. I'm going to place it up here just so I remember what it is. Okay. All right, now using, I'm gonna switch to my um, detailer too because I want a little bit more control over where I place the um, no wipe. And same thing, I'm gonna be flash gearing. So at this point, if you had a client with two nails like this, you could be working back and forth. You could be working back and forth and doing this design anyways, rather than doing one nail at a time. Um, but definitely flash gearing in between is my biggest piece of advice when you're doing the scales because you don't want things to self-level together. So I'm just using my detailer too, and I'm placing that no white top coat over that first scale. I kind of always start working in the same spot each time. One next to it. And I think after this, it is warm in here, so I am going to flash gear this. Okay, flash gear it out. Looks amazing. I I love the look. Like I oh I don't even want I know I'm looking at the names here. I'm so sorry if I say your name wrong. I don't even know how to. I I don't want to say it wrong. Okay. Do you know? <laughs> The lovely lady who says, I love the new builder base. They're awesome. It's such a beautiful name and I don't want to butcher it by even trying. Could you? Yeah, she, you, um, she just mentioned she loves the new builder bases. And if yeah. you guys haven't tried our new builder bases, they are awesome. Yes. They come in fufu, mm -hmm. natural milky white, as well as pink. Yep. And they're honestly, it's all I wear now. <laughs> and we appreciate your feedback. Yes, I'm, thank you so, so much. I feel so bad. I just, you're so sweet. And I don't want to make your name not like sound nice because it looks so pretty. <laughs> the builder base is what I go to all the time on myself. Mm -hmm. Because I find it like when you're doing your own nails too. I mean, we know as nail techs, you have one hand that's easy to do. And then the other hand is like a full on marathon. But I find with the builder base that it just self-levels so nicely, not to the point where you're like having to chase it, but just enough where you put it on and you kind of just lightly manipulate it mm -hmm. and you get a really nice shape. You guys, I'm living on the wild side. I'm going all in here. It's gorgeous. Honestly, it inspires me to want to do a set. Do it. Even though, because like, I'm not, you know, an artist like Natasha, but it's just, it make, she makes it look so easy yep. to do. But you know what, though? Like, we've discussed this all the time. 
in every we're all artists but in our own way you're an artist most definitely when it comes to your structure and your shaping and everything so yvonne says mika mika if, if that's how you pronounce it correctly mika that's beautiful i definitely would have not said like yeah yeah and I think that's my biggest fear too, is not pronouncing someone's name I, correctly. I feel bad. Yeah. I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> it's so pretty. Okay, it's correct. Mika. Yay, okay. Mika. Yay. Well, thank you, Mika. Yes. We're glad that you love the new builder base. And thank you. You were here yesterday too. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's always nice to see the familiar people. Yeah. Joining. Hey guys, we're in the home stretch. I know I said that like 10 minutes ago, but I <laughs> promise this time. And this is proof here too. And it's like, you have to charge for your time. I mean, this is not something that you can just whip up in like five minutes. And if you can, hey, share, me, share your secrets with me because I'd love to know. But for the most part, something like this takes your time. And so you have to really make sure that you're charging for it. Um. Dagmar um, yep. says, thanks so much for sharing with us. Love Ugly Duck Clean Products. Greetings from Austria. Oh, thanks for joining us. It's our pleasure. And then I believe it's pronounced Shan, if that's correct. Yes, um, she was here yesterday too. Okay, because um, mentioned in Netherlands, they have problems saying name too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, all these familiar ducklings. That's awesome. I've just wiped my brush off and put in that trusty cap back on so we don't cure anything. And this is our final cure, folks. Our nail will be complete. So what, what a great way to see how the 40 cat eyes you can use them because a lot oh, yeah. of people don't know different options you can do yep. um, other than just a straight on color. And it's very cool how you can incorporate it into nail art. It's yeah, beautiful. absolutely. This one here, I'm not too sure if it picks up on camera or not, but I actually took two colors. So I took um, number, no, not that one. I took number uh, 178 on the bottom. And I believe number, the one I just used, number 183. And I used these two colors together on this nail here. So I put this color up top, this color at the bottom, and I used my ombre brush and just kind of wiggled them together, did the magnet, and it just adds even more depth and dimension. If you really wanted to make the um, lines in between more prominent on this nail, I could have used black mm -hmm. to draw out my design, but I used white because I just wanted to keep it nice and neutral. This would be a nice nail for somebody who maybe is just newer to nail art and doesn't really want to be too, too crazy. Um, but if you wanted to amp it up and, and really amplify it, you could have done the outline with black. So Shan, we were talking about um, yeah. full name Avery Rain, if that is correct. Avery um, Rain, that's beautiful. Love the live videos and ugly ducklings. Aww. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, you guys. So here is our final, final little scale nail. I, I think it's more of like a crocodile-ish or snake, but either way, it's a pretty fun nail, especially with summer coming. Um, this would look gorgeous outside under that sun. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. As always, all of the products used today are available at UglyDucklingNails.com. We also have a full list of all of our distributors worldwide on our website under the distributor tab. Before I go, I just want to double mention our lovely deal this month for June is our sculpting gel in the 60 ml bottle. It's 15% off all of the colors in the 60 ml bottle and for each bottle purchased you get a beautiful ugly duckling gel bottle stand. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And before I go, also, if you ever need our, our support or um, you have questions or comments or anything about our products, please feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at contact at uglyducklingnails.com. And you can also reach us at the office by phone at 250-590-5977. We're here Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Sending you guys big, huge, squishy hugs from Christical and Natasha in Victoria, BC. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye, guys!